Hi, my name is Liz Wright. And the Lord has been speaking to me quite a lot about the time that we're in. And as we move through, obviously, we're in the, the Hebraic calendar right now, a very significant time, the time of the voice. It's one of the one of the attributed meanings to this dispensation of time. And as we go through into 2022, um, the, the sound of our voice, the effectiveness of our voice is going to rise as the body of Christ. And so that's one of the things that the Lord's been speaking to me about. The other is, I think they're, they're interlinked, um, but is, is based on an encounter that I had. I was taken into heaven quite recently, and I won't go through all of it now, but there's a part that I really feel is very significant to just encourage everybody. Um, where it's, it's amazing, isn't it? When we get heaven's perspective, even though the world's circumstances are as difficult as they are right now, you know, and there's a lot of noise, um, when you get heaven's perspective, it's so empowering and it just positions you internally into, I think, into a, a fresh place of strength and focus and confidence in who our God is and the sovereignty of who our God is. So just in a synopsis, I was taken into heaven. I, I had a profound experience where I saw huge stairs of light, huge doorway made up of light, entered in through the doorway and Jesus was standing right in front of me. I was in what looked like a vast throne room. It also looked a little bit like a library. There were books on living books on the left hand side of the room. And they were floating and they were moving towards people who were in the cloud of witnesses in heaven that were standing behind Jesus. And I knew in my spirit that those books contained the story of their lives. And so I saw many people there uh, as they began to come forward. I saw Bathsheba, the wife of David. Um, I saw so many women I, from the from the cloud of witnesses that, that are there now, biblical uh, uh, ones that are known in the Bible as so biblical women, and also people who are alive today, and then other people uh, that have walked with Jesus down the years, and. Um, and who knew him intimately, you know, and so I saw other people, including like Abigail and Priscilla, maybe biblical characters who are a little bit less well known, but still they're in there, but their heart journey, their story of their life is we only have a little snapshot. Anyway, so those that's what these women represented. They were women that knew beginning men, women and then some men came in and I'll share that in a moment. Um, we, we know a little bit about them but there's so much more to their story. And so Jesus obviously heard my thoughts because I was looking around me thinking, am I in a library? Am I in the throne room? I was like in awe of my, my surroundings. And then of course, as Jesus was standing there, but my thought was, where am I? And Jesus answered my thought and he came towards me and he took hold of my hands and he said to me, you're in the trophy room of heaven. And he said, the stories contained within these books are the heart journey of my people. And then he reached out and took one of the books and he smelt it He said, and he savored the book. And he said, these are my trophies. Your heart journey is my treasure. And so, so much revelation was flooding into me and understanding of our immense value. So it's like Jesus was communicating directly from his heart into mine, just expanding my awareness of this whole subject. And he, he enabled me to understand what matters to him, what matters in heaven. And he said to me, the largely unknown stories, the journey of the heart of my people will be known in this time. So those, those people that are highly celebrated in heaven, whose hearts trusted in Jesus step by step along the way. So just be encouraged in this, in, in, in this time, even if you are never known in this world, you never have a platform of fame, it doesn't matter. What matters in heaven, what matters to Jesus is every moment where your heart chooses him. In the midst of suffering, in the midst of difficulty, your heart chooses to trust Jesus. You know, in that, in that devastatingly difficult circumstance that you may have journeyed through or you are going through right now, those moments where you've gone, Jesus, I don't even have the, 
ability to trust you anymore. Yet I choose this moment to trust you. Help me, Jesus. You know, those little moments where our heart, all you can pray is help, help Jesus. You're looking at him. Your heart is looking to Jesus in those tiny movements of the heart there that is pure faith it might feel very small might feel very weak but to jesus you're loving him and this is what he savors this is his treasure your heart journey is his trophy it's no matter what you do in life obviously what you do in life will hopefully be an overflow of who you are but what you do in life is not as important as who you are in, in the secret place of your heart. And so then the next moment I saw men coming around and there were a few of us women together and I was, we were, Jesus was in front of us and all the men began to come around again. It was fathers and brothers, biblical figures, and then people who are, who have been known in ministry down the years. And then some people that are alive today that Jesus was showing me in, that are in the soap trophy room, you know, that their, their heart is a treasure to him. His, the journey that they've been on, what they've gone through as they've chosen him, you know, he, they're highly esteemed in heaven. And so, and again, he just kept sharing with my heart, these stories are going to be understood. And the story of Bathsheba, you know, her heart journey from very, very difficult early circumstances to becoming who she she was and it had profound influence right in the life of her son king solomon and her husband king david you know, she could have been a very embittered woman but she ended up as a woman who whose heart looked to the lord you know she ended up being a very godly queen whose influence um resulted in you know obviously solomon solomon's writings he refers to being brought up by his godly mother and father and their influence in proverbs 2 or proverbs 3 so i understood that so much of her heart journey so much of other people's heart journeys is going to be known in this time that we're coming into now but so that we can be enriched and empowered and have heaven's perspective regarding what is important and to be able to value and see each other and celebrate each other and encourage each other the way that heaven sees and celebrates us and those that have gone before us and the family that are there now. So as the men came around, they began to lend their strength to the women. They closed rank. They came around the back of us and they stood shoulder to like alongside shoulder to shoulder alongside us and behind us and like i said began to lend their strength and as they did this i felt this immense love coming from the men for the women it was beautiful and pure and profound and they, they literally closed rank and as they did the lord said to me the women's voices are going to rise now but it was as the men closed rank that this began to happen and then I felt this amazing unity just and a strength that came into us as the body of Christ as a result and then I began to hear this pure sound which was the revelation a comprehensive revelation of who Jesus Christ is that came as an expression that was so pure and so profound and so multifaceted as the men and the women became united and so there was, there were no, and with the women and the women and the men and the men, I could feel like this incredible love, supernatural love as the family of God and all of our eyes were on Jesus. Our hearts were completely given over to him. Our hearts were, his, our, our heart journey was his trophy. And it was just a desire of our heart to just look at him and reflect him. And so this pure sound that was filled with power that was full of light, full of truth, full of love, the expression coming from our lives through what we say, what we do, the power that was coming off us was the, a pure revelation of Jesus Christ coming through his body and bathing the nations in light. Our prayers became powerful. We began to release the light, release the revelation truth straight from the heart of Jesus. We were filled with pure love 
no agenda, no superstars, just pure love, pure honor, and the ability to see each other through the eyes of Jesus' heart and to value each other in the way that heaven does. So I believe that's some of what we're going to start to see manifest more. And so coming back full circle, back to what I was saying in the beginning, we're in the Hebraic decade of the voice right now, the year and the decade of the voice. Our voice the pure expression. I believe the voice doesn't just mean what we speak audibly, but it's the full expression of the intention of the heart of God that will move out through us now. The manifestation, the great unveiling of Christ to our hearts and through our hearts out into the world. And we are going to start to bathe the nations with power. And I believe this is part of what we're going to see in terms of the harvest, the awakening of the nations to who he is as they see Jesus shining through us. So, so be encouraged. I believe this is absolutely what we're going to start to see more and more and more as we go into 2022. And he, like I said, even though the nations are in a very difficult time, from heaven's perspective, we're in an incredible time. So make the pressure serve you. Keep looking at Jesus keep choosing Jesus in the secret place of your heart. Know that when you do that, you bring the heart of Jesus great joy and you are highly celebrated in heaven. And these are the stories that will be told now going forward because it's truth. It's authentic. It's who you really are in Jesus and it will encourage and empower others. And so, and it's, like I said, it's what Jesus treasures. So I hope that blesses you and happy, happy, blessed 2022 as we go into um, what's going to be an incredible year. And you're going to start to see yourself and the bride, the body of Christ coming forth with a different level of purity, different manifestation of love, looking like Jesus. I think like never before, hopefully. So bless you. Happy, happy 2022.